Today's video is one of the most significant reminders that it's not the first shot that counts, it's the first hit. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Norfolk, Virginia in the United States. Thanks to Wilderness Tactical Products for sponsoring today's video. Look for a link in the description for $5 off on the ankle first aid kit that I wear every day. We're gonna see the robber come in the door here. You see the first employee is just gonna kinda of see him whatever and then our good guy Salah comes up and sees him pull a gun, pulls his own and gets after him. Actually has a malfunction on the second round clears it, keeps going with the guy who fights back, and finally puts one in him right there just above the bad guy's right hip. And now he starts telling him, hey man, don't move. I've got a shot on you if you touch that gun. And the guy's gonna sneak away from his gun, and he is then going to kind of crawl his way to the door with a hip with a bullet in it, which was 150 grain HST. Now, I wanna show you another angle after he runs off. We see a second angle here as the employee comes up. Guy's coming in with his face covered. And Salah here is gonna grab his firearm, go very fast, get two shots and then a malfunction. Guy gets a couple shots on his way right there, a third one. Bad guy ended up firing six shots total and Salah fired five shots total. We see it from a third angle here, one, two, and there's the malfunction. He's gotta clear that gun, gets it cleared third. Fourth shot didn't do anything there, but the fifth one certainly did and put him down. Now then we go back to this second angle. I want you to kind of see what our, our you know good guys are doing here while the bad guy does his holy cow, I've been shot crawl to the door as he is going to uh, you know try to get the heck away. And he does that. He's gonna crawl his way all the way to the door and run the heck out of there. Now, interesting here, I'm gonna let it play a little bit because I want you to see how the follow-up goes. He's gonna go over not to go uh, out the door and chase the guy, but to secure his firearm. Gonna bring that over here and secure the bad guy's firearm. Again, bad guy fired six times here and then he's gonna call 911. Now he's gonna actually go out the front door, go watch the interview that I did with him and you'll learn all the specifics here. He's gonna go warn the neighbors to close the doors, call the cops, took the cops 12 minutes to arrive. He's gonna actually console his coworker here. They were not hurt either one and that is where this one ends. Boy, that one could have gone either way and I'm very grateful that our good guy made it out. Make sure to get the interview on Active Self Protection Extra. If you want to support the work we do here at Active Self Protection, one of the ways you can do that is by joining as a patron member. You can do that on our website for three bucks a month. Hit the link in the description and, and in that then ASP gets benefited the whole three dollars a month. Or you can join as a channel member right here on YouTube and we rev split that with Google so it supports them and supports us. Thank you for those who are doing that. I really appreciate you. Let's get to the lessons. Buckle up everyone, we've got a lot of lessons out of this one. The first thing we're gonna talk about is this bad guy coming in. Now you notice he's washed out because of the, you know, the lightness of the outside and that makes a lot of sense. But this is why you pay attention in your world. Specifically, you're working in retail. You see this customer, she's like, wait a minute, this guy's got his hoodie up and he's got a mask on. And we can actually see, even though he's a long way away, that he has his mask on. That's a clue, friends. But if you go watch the interview with Salah, he said, I just wasn't sure what was going on. And that makes sense. You gotta know what your go markers are. It's a big lesson out of this one. We're gonna talk about it several times. So now the guy comes in, and I want you to notice here that as Salah comes in, he's pointing. And if you can see him all the way on the right side of the monitor there, he's pointing at the guy and he's pointing at him and saying, Hey man, let me see your face. It's totally okay in those instances. Again, this guy is setting off all the alarms, his hood up, his face covered and all that. Hey man, take your hood off, let me see your face. Issue commands, so then that way you know that things are going okay. He might go, oh man, I'm sorry, I was just out mowing the grass or something. But you gotta know that, that he's covering his face for a reason and unless you have that, issuing those commands gives you something significant there. Now, one of the next things we're gonna see him do is he is gonna come in and now start to pull his gun. But notice that Salah is actually staging his draw at this point. So he is reaching back to get ready to draw and cheating his draw to his gun. You can do that strong side, you can do it appendix as well. If you do it appendix, what you do is you actually cheat your cover garment clear is what you do. I'd recommend you cheat it on the strong side as well. And when you do that, you can get significantly faster on your draw to first shot if you do that and you cheat it. And I see people cheat their draw all the time and it's a great tactic if you're wondering but it's not quite time to draw, cheat your draw and get yourself ready to. It's the right way to go so that you're faster. Now he did say in my interview with him that his go signal was when he saw the gun come out of the guy's pocket. As soon as he saw the gun come out of the guy's pocket, he decided that was his go signal. Friends, recognize, we train all the time on the range that your go signal is an auditory beep, but in reality, the go signal in a real gunfight is always gonna be visual. It is almost never an auditory beep. 
And that's okay because you respond faster to visual stimuli than you do to auditory. So understand that it's the, the decision-making time is so important and he is gonna get his gun out here in a hurry and get that first shot off because he cheated his draw, 0.96 second draw to first shot, which is lightning fast. And you can see, somebody might say, oh, John, he drew on a drawn gun. He drew from the drop. If you're lightning fast and you got a sub one second draw to first shot, guess what? You can actually get away with drawing from the drop like this. Now that said, Salah did say that he didn't see his sights. And so that first shot was awry. It did not get a hit but it did get Fibsa out of the guy and made him move. Notice as soon as the guy saw the gun coming, he moved as well, which is why you wanna see your target. I like target focused shooting and then running a soft sight focus personally or a red dot. Notice as well that the bad guy gets a shot back on Salah and so the Fibsa factor, that fudge I'm being shot at factor, applies to good guys as well. Not just the bad guys, but the good guys too. I think he did something really, really good here though, is that when he moved forward, it took that guy a while to find him. We're gonna see that on some of the other angles because he moved laterally. He didn't just stand where he was and deliver or come forward and deliver. He moved diagonally to another spot where the guy could not see him as well. But he did have fibs a factor as a good guy too. Be ready for that. Now notice here that he moved again. He didn't just pop right up where he was before. This is something that Pat McNamara talks about, that people are pre-programmed to pick up patterns of predictability. So you don't want to be predictable. You want to, if you have to come up from concealment, move to another place. And that's exactly what he did. And because he did that, he had more opportunity to protect himself and the people around him. That was an excellent tactic of his and definitely got to where, you know, it, it was good for him and gave him more opportunity to win the fight. Excellent tactic there when using concealment. Now then he gets another shot here as we keep going. We get a couple here, but now he finally gets on the guy and notice again, he's moved, but see how the guy was pointing where he was just a second ago. That's where he expected him to be. And because Salah wasn't there, he got offline. He had a good shot. Now, of course, I'm going to recommend he puts two hands on the gun. That'll give him a better chance of accuracy. The second thing we want to look at here is look at where his center of mass is. You're not seeing a squared up torso here. You're seeing a real human being who is crouched over and moving three quarters away from us. So that high center chest there is actually right under his armpit, kind of the, the dark-ish green spot. And instead, he got him in the hip. Okay, fine. And that put him down and recognized that even some sometimes not the best anatomical hit can do the job if you get the first hit. What stopped this fight? It wasn't the first shot. It was the first hit. So all those misses took a lot of time. You want to be the first one to get a hit, which is why we talk about the first anatomically significant hit. So I got the first anatomically significant hit. That was enough. Now then he starts issuing commands. He stopped shooting in the moment when the guy went down and he didn't have a gun on him, wasn't actively shooting and started issuing commands. That is absolutely outstanding. We shoot to stop the threat. The second the threat stopped and he said he could see the gun, see that it wasn't in the guy's hand and that he wasn't shooting. So he started issuing commands and told him, if you touch that gun, I'm gonna shoot you again. And the guy didn't. Friends, you gotta know when to ratchet it down from the using of the gun to the pointing of the gun to issuing commands and knowing how to do that. Incredibly important, not taught. In a whole lot of handgun classes that I've taken, you learn that from places like this here at Active Self Protection. So now then, the guy's going to kind of decide to kind of crawl out of there. So I think it was good that Salah kept the gun up on him because you don't know if he's going to re-engage the fight, but he left the gun there. Now notice here that he didn't say, you know, hey, stop and, and just stay there or whatever. And so I didn't shoot him here. The guy runs off and he lets him. I think that was also great decision making. Who cares if the guy runs off? He's shot. You know he's shot. They're going to find him in the hospital eventually. So it's not like he's going to get away forever. And you put yourself at more risk if you choose to run after him, if you choose to shoot him and all those things. Don't recommend that. And he didn't do that. That was really good. Just let him go, guys. You've won the fight at that point. Continue the dominance in the space that you have and solidify the dominance in the space that you have. That's the right thing. Now, as we see it from the other angle here, I want to notice a couple of things as he gets going. Number one, you see that one, two, three, but I want you to see the fact that because he's moved to our right, his left, that guy can't see him. He has moved to a very advantageous position here so that he has the ability to get that guy. Now that said, a couple times we're gonna see here over the next couple angles that he, he has to peek over to see him. Well, guys, you don't have to do that. These are Formica counters. These are just, you know, hardwood, uh, not even wood, they're plasterboard, particle board counters. You could shoot right through those and they would be fine, but you gotta be trained to do that a little bit. Generally, people will not shoot what they cannot see, but you know the threat is there. You know what the backstop is. You can go for it if you have the skills to do it. Once again here, he's gotta peek over so that they can see each other, but he finally does get a good shot on the guy. Now, I do wanna notice one of the reasons I think that Salah missed here is you notice that he fouled his draw. You can see right here, he's got a handful of shirt as the gun is coming out. Why? Because he tried a single-handed draw, and that's not uncommon, and I'm not yelling at him for him, and I get it. 
but this is one of the reasons that I teach a two-handed garment clearance and draw if at all possible. And it was quite possible for him here, and therefore that's what I teach, to get that out of the way and have less of a chance of fouling the draw. Because it not only fouled as the gun was coming out, but it kept him from getting two hands on the gun. As you see, it, we spend some time here. Notice it took him a while to get his shirt out of the gun, and that kept him from getting his support hand on the gun adequately. So that was a timing error on getting his gun out. He's used to putting his hands together, but you gotta be able to do that. Guys, I'm gonna tell you, there's a saying that we have at Active Self Protection. Grip is the master, sight set the pace, trigger is the servant. And the fact of the matter is he had a hard time getting his grip, which made a hard time of shooting accurately. So grip is the master. You got to establish that grip because he didn't and wasn't able to establish that. That shot went errant and it wasn't there. But I do notice that this is something that we teach all the time when you're doing a fast draw to first shot. He didn't hang out there at the end and wait after he had put the gun out there. What we teach our students to do is we teach them to get that gun out fast, see the front sight as it's going out, and don't hesitate in the trigger press. And he did a very good job of that here, but we don't want to miss, right? That round went off into the wild blue yonder. You want to put that in the bad guy and end the fight as soon as you can. Notice though he was fast enough that he actually was able to draw from the drop and get after the guy. Now here's where the gun went south. It was actually the second shot that he induced a malfunction in the gun, and that is again a grip-related problem. So because he didn't get his full master grip on the gun, a good thumbs forward grip, his thumb is actually back back behind on the back of the slide and that caused a failure to extract in the gun because the slide hit him in the thumb. One of the reasons we want to have that strong master grip when we say grip is the master is that most on a semi-automatic pistol, most malfunctions are user induced and grip induced. And so therefore we want that strong grip on the gun to prevent that. And here you can see what malfunction he has here. It's actually not a stove pipe so you can't see a, a you know, a, a case sticking out of the gun. That is just a failure to extract and the gun is kind of halfway in there. The way that you're gonna clear that is a non-diagnostic linear malfunction clearance. You're gonna tap the base plate, gonna rack the slide. I even think that you know most people don't rack this or tap the base plate. He didn't here. But notice here that he comes over and he said in that moment, John, I know that I had a headshot on the guy, but I pressed the trigger and I had a dead gun because I had a malfunction. Okay, fine. This is why you wanna have that master grip and that full firing grip on the gun. And the reason you wanna have a solid grip on the gun is because he could have ended the fight here if he had not induced a malfunction and the malfunction was grip related. So train that grip until you cannot get it wrong coming out of the holster, until it gets out right 100% of the time. That's how important that is. Because he wasn't able to get the shot there and the guy was able to get a shot back at him. Now here is where I'm saying, notice he's gonna spend some time here peeking over the counter to see what's going on here and to be able to shoot the guy. You could shoot right through that counter, shoot right through the phones, right through the counter, the bullet will rip right through it if you're carrying good ones, and he is, he's carrying 150 grain federal HSTs. In that gun, it'll go right through that countertop and into a known bad guy. It's perfectly acceptable to do that. You've identified the threat, but you just have to be taught to do that and given the okay to do that, and most people haven't. It is okay for you to do that. Bad guys won't shoot what they can't see, but good guys need to be able to if they positively know it's a threat. Now, notice here that he finally gets a good shot in the guy, and it was his fifth shot that he got into the guy. Uh, but it was a one-handed shot. Now, why a one-handed shot? Because he did not get the good master grip on the gun. His first four shots weren't what they needed to be, so it took him until his fifth shot and gave that bad guy a lot of chances. Now, I am nothing but impressed with him. He did enough to win the fight, put this shot in the guy, went in his right hip, went a little bit low left from what he wanted it to, Pretty common with a pre, you know, a pre-ignition push or an anticipation here because bad juju is happening. But he put a shot in the guy, and that is great. Of course, I like the two-handed grip much better. Now then, he issues good commands. You really want to think about issuing commands. You got to be able to verbalize with a gun in your hand and be able to say, "This is what I want you to do." Simple, positive commands. Just you know, again, show me your hands. Leave it right there. Don't move. Simple commands like that. And when the guy goes, let it go. A couple things in the follow-up here that I want to talk about. Number one, I know some people are going to say, oh, never touch the gun because then your fingerprints are on it or whatever. This place is highly camera you know, uh, covered. Um, nobody's going to worry about whether or not that was your gun or someone else's. And it's not like somebody else was murdered and then they ran off or something. You know whose gun that was. It was the bad guy's gun. You can firmly establish that that was the bad guy's gun. By all means, secure that firearm. I think it makes far better sense to secure it, put it where you know that it's safe rather than leaving it out there floating in space. Again, if this is a whodunit or something like that, that's a different story. But in this case, we know who the actors are. Secure that firearm for sure if you have to stay in the vicinity of it because you don't know who is going to come in and all those things. Now, next thing here, as things are going to kind of speed up, you notice that he's still walking around with a gun in his hand. I can't tell you enough, 
put the gun away. This is why I say you want to have a quality holster that you can put the gun away in and just get it out of your hand when you don't need it anymore. Because notice that he's actually hugging his coworker and he still has a gun in his hand at this point. And that gun is kind of pointing all over. Now he didn't point it at anybody. He was safe. So, okay, fine. I'm totally down with that. That said, far better in this case. There's no need to have a gun out and in your hand at this point. Safely and carefully, reluctantly holster that gun before you're off running around. You still have it available to you in order to use if God forbid you needed to, but you don't have the safety problem. So make sure that you do that. Now then, he is on the phone with 911. Last thing we want to talk about, again in my interview, police officers took 12 to 15 minutes to arrive after hearing the fact that there was a shooting, that there was a man shot and we had a defensive gun use. So you are truly on your own. Now, obviously here, when Salah goes outside, this is something that I don't recommend. He went next door to go tell his next door friends who ran the business next door to keep themselves inside and those kinds of things. And I get that. I'd have probably suggested using the phone instead to tell him that not going outside where the bad guy is or whatever, but it worked out okay for him in this instance. Man, is there a lot of lessons out of this one, guys. Let's really learn about how important that master grip is. Why I say all the time that it is so critically important for that draw to first shot to be fast, accurate, and reliable. Let's learn about moving with a gun in our hand, about using the cover and concealment that we have available and taking good follow-up actions. Great job, Salah, you covered your ASP.